Hey y'all, this is Anna Alexander. Welcome back to the basement for one of the last times as we are here taking a break from the heat of the day and shit, but we're watching Lucifer season three, episode two, where Lucifer has become more angelic and less devilish. Is that what's happening? He has his wings, he cannot get rid of, he can't turn into his devil face, and he doesn't know what to do with himself. And we have a new villain, who he is, what he is, what they want. I should say they, because we don't know which way they swing. But uh, I don't know about you, but every time I hear it, the Sinner Man, you can tell I'm Gen X, because I just hear, <laughs> Can't find the cinnamon. <laughs> I can't stop it, but I'm here and I'm excited and I'm so glad that you all are all here with me. I'm also finding it hilarious that I've had many different configurations of how I should watch the end of the season. So I'm just gonna go along my merry way. And when I get to 20, I'll put up a vote. You all can tell me then which episode to watch after 20, but we won't worry about it until we get there. So I'm going to relax, not onto the cozy comfy blanket because it is warm and comfy, but I do have with me today because <laughs> I'm trying to finish out this, what the little bits left. Okay, so I made it dark and stormy and I had somebody you had left behind at a party. <laughs> Should not have done so. Plantation rum. I think it's 69% proof. It has a kick. <laughs> It has a kick. Tell me what you're drinking. I would love to know. And if you're watching this early in the morning, I'm sure your tea or your coffee is lovely. Mimosa it up if you got the opportunity. But whatever it is, I hope you're having a great day. And, and yeah, let's do this. I hope that changes. Oh, Lucifer. Lucifer's getting down with whom? So he is no longer thinking of Chloe in that way. Like he's going, friend. Has he friend zoned Chloe? I wanna see your back, sir. Do you have the scars? <gasps> You're an angel. Oh, gosh, uh, my apologies. <laughs> oh, keep them out. I'm totally into cosplay. Ah. I could dress up as a devil and make it really sexy. Oh. I have no desire to have sex with myself. We're done. Where are you going? The mood has been broken. To do some grooming. No, not again. You cut them off, didn't you? Again. Yes, but then they grew back, so I cut them off again. It's like whack-a-mole back there. <laughs> I'm worried about you. What you're describing is self-mutilation. Doctor, someone is forcing those wings on me. They took away my devil face. And I won't stand for someone making me something I'm not. I have a thought. So that I can remember it. Uh, Doctor, mm. are you sure you're all right to be back at work? It certainly was a traumatic experience. Fortunately, I'm trained to deal with that sort of thing, and I'm doing just that. Stolen my shtick as well. He gives out favors to people for a price to be named later. Oh. Lucifer, you didn't invent the idea of giving out favors. <laughs> yep, forgot who I was talking to. <laughs> but whatever he is, I'm gonna stop at nothing to find him. We found him. This is clearly not the Cinnamon. Clearly not, since I'm pretty sure that no one with that name actually exists. And oh yeah, he confessed under interrogation. What was his motive? Well, then he must be working for the Cinnamon. I think so too. And could you please stop saying cinema? Cinema? Big Nina Simone fan? Well, actually, what? I am, but I was nothing. just saying something. Nothing, detective. it's nothing. Are you hiding something from me, Detective? Yes. I don't care, I was just asking. New case came in, you're up. I have no intention of arresting anyone. I want to grab him by his neck and see what happens when I squeeze hard enough. If you can bring me any tiny bit of evidence that this sinner man actually exists, I will be the first to look into it. Did Zoe just say, go investigate? You go on your own? You dig and ask and dig and ask some more? On your own? Unsupervised? Did she just suggest that? I need some 
Let me guess, Lonzo's dead. Was that his name? I don't remember. The guy's name is J.D. Woodstock. He lived right around the corner. Neighbors said he was pretty quiet, unemployed, but we found this on him. All right, this is the new case. <laughs> it's been a while. You know, you know, you know. Looks like he was a struggling comedian, trying to figure out if he performed anywhere. You know, there are a lot of insult comics out there, and not everybody enjoys being mocked. Mm. We should listen to Daniel, actually. He's got a unique insight into this case. A fellow broken soul who puts the most embarrassing parts of his life on display for his audience for an easy laugh. He does stand-up. I do improv. They're completely... Dan, you do improv? How did I not know that, and how did he? How did she... I thought she had heard. Tell a lot of people. Hey. Yeah. Hey, Ella. As in J.D. Woodstock? Yeah. Why, you know him? Yeah, he made big news a couple days ago claiming Bobby Lowe stole his joke. Oh. 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 Yeah, J.D. claimed that Bobby's show was based on his own material. Right, so you're saying that this giant-headed buffoon stole our poor victim's ideas, his life's work, and built a business out of it? Look, I know you don't believe me, Detective, but I happen to be going through something quite similar. So if I can't get my own justice, I'm going to get it for this poor, unfunny soul. Who knows what he might do? Oh, we have a viewer. We Somebody's watching. Someone is watching from afar, and it's the lieutenant. So does the lieutenant work for the sinner man, or is the lieutenant, he is the sinner man? Bobby Lowe would never do something like that. Bobby's show is so personal. There's no way that you could fake it. Right. Don't listen to her. The man is clearly a thief. <laughs> Let's go give him a good throttling. Wait, 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 wait. You guys are going to go talk to him? Like, maybe I should go with. You know, to collect the evidence. If he's innocent, then there won't be any evidence to collect, so it'll probably be better if you hang here. But I just think to be safe, I should collect as much stuff as possible. You know, fingerprints, a lock of hair, an autograph. Right. Not an autograph, pumpkin. A writing, a sample of his writing. Hey. Hey. Does anyone ever call you a man? Probably not. Oh, you would be the first. How are you really doing, by the way? I'm fine. I think she has major PTSD. You have your powers back. They haven't worked since that day. I think it's just my father testing me again. How is he testing you? There's something I need to do in the penthouse, and uh, I've been avoiding it. Why don't you let me help you with whatever this is? What does he have to do in the penthouse? Think his brother. Then I'm sure I can handle it. Forgive his brother. Hug his brother out. Oh! Severed angel wings in a closet. Oh. Proof of the divine just left on the floor like, like used laundry. Thanks, little miss. Uh, elevator girl did not seem oh, by the, the, the divine proof. Yeah, this is gruesome. You know where the garbage bags are? You're gonna put his wings in the garbage bag. I want all the intel that you gathered on Lucifer. Why would I have any intel on Lucifer? Because when he first started working with Decker, you were still married to her. And I'm guessing you broke the rules and dug up everything you could on him. <laughs> I didn't, I mean, yeah. I might get all on my desk in an hour. In an hour? In an hour. It's the biggest cock I've ever seen. Waka, waka, waka. What did I say? I'm sorry. No eye contact. No green Skittles in the game. Oh, he's guilty of something. Why are you stopping? Show starts in five minutes, honey. Chop, chop. But he just called her honey. He's so sweet. You know why people accuse others of stealing material? Because the others are thieves? Because they're failures. And instead of facing that, they blame successful people like me. Did he just indirectly call Lucifer a failure? Or at least that's what Lucifer heard in his but head. some of us have important work to do, like entertaining America. If you'd like to see how it's done, take a seat. Take him in. Take him in for questioning, Chloe. I can't believe it. He invited us to a taping. Oh, L's. L's. Well, that was the worst date of my entire life. 
Oh, come on now, Bobby. I'm sure it wasn't that bad. What is this? What is this show? <laughs> I didn't say I left before dessert. This is what that arrogant fraud is so proud of. I mean, I guess party. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> is this live? I can turn it into this. Get lost, Braggle Rock. <laughs> is this live? Hey, mind your own business, Doctor Who. Pip it out of here. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. Get the hell out of my set, man. Okay. Okay, fine, then. What do you desire, Mr. Lowe? Here we go. No. Nope. Right, this no, one. No, 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 no. Put, 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 put that down. Put that. Check it right. That was a... Yeah! Oh! <laughs> oh, don't worry, everyone. There's just a gun stashed inside the puppet. Well, at least no one was hurt. What? He did it. Are you insane? Why is there a gun in the puppet? Oh, we never used that puppet. You hit a gun in it? I didn't think some lunatic was gonna try to kill me with it. It's just a flesh wound. It's a flesh wound. I see. So you killed our poor victim, ran back to work, and cased it in an old puppet. Not the murder weapon. This is a 380, and the murderer used a 9 millimeter. I didn't kill JD. What more could you possibly desire? I want out of this hell. Of? Every day I come to work and I tell stupid jokes with puppets. Puppets! You know what the biggest joke is? Yeah? Me! <laughs> okay, I didn't mean to laugh at him, but however. And now that JD's dead, I'm never getting out of here! He was telling the truth. I stole his act. Shakus, Bobby Lowe. Shakus. Maybe Ella should have found more evidence. <laughs> but why hide the gun on set? Yeah. Because I was getting death threats. Any idea who was making these threats? They came from an anonymous email. But like I said, I stole the jokes. The only person who knows who they're about is the dead guy. I'm gonna need those emails. They're from your thief at cinnamon.com. I'm guessing. They're putting these in a trash can. This must be so painful. Look at all those white button downs. Wow! How do you know it's a test? Because I'm faced with having to dispose of the one thing that I so desperately want back. It seems awfully cruel. Well, if it were easy, it wouldn't be much of a test. Would it? Where are you going to put those, Amenadiel? I know what you're doing. Stop making fun of me or else I'm going to stab you. What's the joke that he's so angry about? They'll kill our unfunny imaginary friends. I did some research and originally the show was much edgier. About a guy dealing with his insecurities about his... Um... Well, I, I really don't want to tell you. Does it rhyme? Start with a P and end in this? Dealing with his insecurities about his um, micro penis. Yes, it does. <sighs> Hold me close to tiny donga. So you're saying we're looking for a needle in a penis today? Anyhow, after it became a family show, the micro penis got removed. Did anyone even notice? <laughs> this rum is hitting me, so I'm trying to figure out how a micro penis got worked into a story about a guy with his imaginary puppet friends. Right, stop pretending the call is cutting out, Maze. I taught you that trick. Someone's been in his house. Someone's in his house. Lucifer Morningstar. I figured out what you really are. Uh, Lieutenant? Finally, someone in the police department realizes I am exactly what I say I am, the devil himself. This is about the sinner man. You think I'm the sinner man? <laughs> well, truth is... You're not the sinner man. He's smart and calculated. Hmm. Maybe I am the sinner man. Surprise! What is it that you think I am? An idiot. <laughs> so what, you broke into my apartment just to insult me? You could have just waited till I was in the office. Yeah. No, I came here to warn you. The Sinner Man is after you. 
I know you're looking into him, but you have no idea what you're doing. I butted heads with him in Chicago. Did not end well. And that's why he's in you L.A.? Yeah, with the tail between your legs. I did, yeah. Oh, Ooh, okay. He killed someone. It's close to me. Daughter. Mother. In insert family here. I don't want what happened to me to happen to anyone else, even you. You can keep your head buried in the sand if you want to, but I go mano a sinner mano, all right? I've got this. Compost? Recycling? What do I know? <gasps> Garbage! Never had to dispose of pieces of divinity before. And you don't think somebody at the dump is going to see those? <gasps> He's burning them. How flammable are they? Well, that plastic bag's pretty flammable, but... I thought this would be a little more... reverential. I feel like we should say something. What do you want me to say here, Linda? But if Lucifer wants to treat his wings like trash, then trash they shall be, even if it pains me in my very soul. I don't think Lucifer knows how much this hurts you. Oh yeah, I don't think Lucifer's thinking about it at all. Everything he does seems designed to hurt me. To test you. <laughs> wow. My test is Lucifer. It's always been Lucifer. You're very wise, Linda. <laughs> Thanks, amen. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work, does it? After all the emails to the same IP address, a comedy club on Sunset called The Laugh Maker. The emails were always sent Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Well, that's when Bobby's show aired, so it makes sense that that could set him off. That's also when they have open mic night, so it could be any one of the comedians performing, too. Is Dan gonna try stand-up now? Our guy is clearly sensitive, right? Why don't we use that to flush him out? I'll get someone on stage that'll really piss him off. And I think we all know the perfect man for that job. Welcome to the stage for the first time, the devilishly handsome Dan Espin. <laughs> Remember yes and, Daniel. Why is Dan doing stand-up? Hi, everybody. Hey, hi. I should so, drink. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Uh, I have a friend, and he's got a tiny penis, uh, a micro penis. Uh, in fact, maybe they should have worked up some jokes on the way, on the way to the stage. <laughs> because atoms are small. Boo! It's a medical condition, you monster. <laughs> But can't stop, won't stop. This is much too fun to take. <laughs> I want you to keep going. Can't pay that. <laughs> he's on it. Next, you're going to tell us that his willy's so small that when he wants to have sex, he needs to call out a search party. <laughs> or that his weenus is so small, it looks like his testicles are giving the tiniest thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's no friend at all, and you're the one with the baby carrot. Oh, Lucifer. Lucifer. I don't have a tiny. Oh. Wait, wait. Oh, didn't bring any. <laughs> you didn't bring us any. You, you did. He brought his own. Oh, lovely. He brought his own tomatoes. Well, I'd argue you undermined it with your botched attempt at humor. All I did was throw a drowning man a tomato. Oh, what are the chances? <laughs> And I told you, stand up and improv are completely different. You couldn't have improv that you were a stand up comedian. There is no way anyone's going to appreciate that. Hey, man. I just uh, want to say, really appreciate you saying what you did. Well, I mean, someone has to stand up for the little guy. Am I right? Yeah. But hearing stuff like that it just makes you want to murder someone, doesn't it? it sure does. <laughs> oh, well done, detective. Right, just to be sure, shall I pull his pants down or do you want the honors? Oh, me. What? Come on. Right. <laughs> uh. So you didn't send threatening emails to Bobby Lowe? No, I did. <laughs> Back when Bobby was nobody, I toured with him. And that's when I figured he heard about my... Oh! How would he have heard about that? All the Chuckle Bunnies talk. The what? 
chicks who like to have sex with comedians. Well, there's a term for that. Mm -hmm. oh, I should get a I term. have heard that before. The devil bunnies. Oh, no, Lucy fans. Lucy fans! Lucy fans! And then you found out that JD was writing the jokes. And justifiably murdered him. I forgave him. I don't mind a fellow struggling comic busting balls. It's when a millionaire starts punching down that I get pissed. Or that good looking jerk from the club. Wait, oh. who's he talking about? Dan. Oh, right. Are you sure? <laughs> he even made up this sad story about a warm up comic wanting to meet with him about a gig. He was telling bad jokes before even worse jokes a coveted gig. Are you kidding? You work an hour a day and clear six figures. Do you remember the name of the uh, warm-up comedian? Oh, the girl. Uh, like Shelly, maybe, or... Sheila? Yeah, that was it. Do you know her? Detective, what did I miss? Who's Sheila? She was the name of Bobby Lowe's warm-up comedian. Do you not remember meeting her, Lucifer? Well, apparently he has forgotten it. I still don't understand. She seemed devastated when Bobby said he was a joke thief. Well, maybe she's not pissed off about the theft. What else would she be angry about? That she, he wants to leave. Let's find out. Okay. Who's in the lobster or whatever that red thing is? Puppets weren't creepy enough. Someone's in the cat, someone's in the cat. Hello? <sighs> so that's the theater, that place is huge. Well, where did he pull this out of? <laughs> she can run after someone in those shoes if she should so need to. It looks like they would slip off. Who's this? Sheila? Did she do this to you? I told her I was gonna quit, and, and she, she freaked out on me. I, I can't take it any, anymore. My craft! Okay, okay. midlife crisis later. It's craft. So what's the plan, Sheila? Go out in a blaze of glory? Why kill and torture a man for this pretentious hack? Do you know how hard it is to crawl out of the stand-up world and get a gig like this? So he stole material. Hell, he stole half my set, too. Who cares? You should! Jokes don't make a comedian. Everyone has an itchy butt joke. It's all about what you do with it. What you do with your itchy butt? With the joke! If you don't get out of my way, I swear. Oh, he punched her. He didn't just like tackle her. He punched her. Okay, so how do we get it down? You got super strength, dude. Just <laughs> over your shoulder. I did some digging and you're right. The center man is here in LA. Oh, right. Are you not gonna take my advice from last night? Most definitely not. What the cinnamon's murderous thug in? I couldn't get anything out of him. Maybe you can. Ooh, Lieutenant Marcus wants to see him working. Let's keep it between us. The less people who know about it, the less chance anyone gets hurt. But the detective has a kid. She stays out of it. So if Marcus is the sinner man, this is what he finds out. What? Oh, what's his name? Henchman dude. Told into whom? I know the Sinner Man had you skewer Sam under the pier, so tell me everything. Who the hell is the Sinner Man? Why did you really desire Sam's death? Oh, that's the way you phrase that question. I didn't want my girl to sleep with him anymore. And? And that's it. Let Medieval on his ass to send a message. To whom? No one touches my girl. Oh, just mankind in general. Oh, okay. Come on, Alonso, what about the Sinner Man? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know anything. I swear. Wings? Now? Or is he too angry for wings? I believe you. Yeah. Because he wet his himself? Is that why? I mean, maybe the cinema manipulated Alonso without him realizing it. Or perhaps he was just a deranged fellow who felt impaling a rival lover to death was the way to his girl's heart. It's not. It shouldn't be. Lucifer, I want to talk about your wings. You can't keep doing this to yourself. Oh, I agree. It's getting exhausting. No, I need a new solution. Maybe I should hire someone to do it. It's easy to let external factors 
define us, especially the traumatic ones. But only if we let them. We all have itchy butts. Excuse me? First, it's something the woman said to me right before I punched her in the face. <laughs> It's not about the idea, it's about the execution. It's about how I use the wings. That's actually... I have a feeling this is gonna go sideways. So I'll just tuck them away and pretend they don't exist. Less good. I'm Lucifer Bloody Morningstar. I do favors better than anyone else. Amongst other things, of course. Or at least, I used to. Oh no, he's gotta test this theory out now. It's about time I got back in the game. He's giving favors? That's what he's doing? Okay, this kid looks shifty and he looks familiar. Why have I seen him someplace? Hello? Tell me, what is it that you truly desire? Hi. Hello, sir. Hello back, sir. Ignore the stomping from upstairs. Okay. So a thought I had earlier, which begs a question in a theory and a conversation, respectful dialogue, respectful dialogue, which was Lucifer saying at the beginning that these wings are foistered upon him and he does not want them. And the first thought I had in my head was, but you were born with them. You were born with them. So they, you might not want to deal with them now, but it's not as if they're completely foreign to you. That's how you were born. And then a few minutes went by, and I don't know if you saw it in my eyes, but there's some people who have things that they're born with that it doesn't feel like them. It doesn't feel right to them. It feels as if they're foistered upon them. So it is an interesting thought and process, and it's something I think every person has to decide for themselves if their body feels right to them. Maybe it's the room talking, but it, for what this was, for what it was, and now here we are a few years later, the conversation and the discussion or the thought about Lucifer and this part of his journey and his wings is interesting and different and, and interesting and different. It's a new context. That's what I think where I'm thinking about the context and the implications are now different than maybe where they were. Or if that was the discussion that was kind of being brewed about when this first aired, however many years ago, that'd be interesting to know. Marcus, I don't trust. I don't trust Marcus as much as I want to. I don't trust him. And Dan bombing so badly at stand-up comedy. <laughs> Why? Why? You just pretend you're a stand-up comedian. You didn't have a joke or two or a thought process before you took that stage. Hugin, no, no. But we have no clues, no thoughts, no really anything about the Sinner Man, just that he is out there. He's supposedly a terribly bad person. And does he want Lucifer? Why? Why? And burning those wings. Oh my God. Burning the wings. And Linda's not all right. And Amenadil's still lost. There's shit going down. There's shit going down. So there we go. Um, Episode three, lots more to go, lots more of the season to go. And I'm so glad that you're all here with me for this adventure. So please take care of yourselves. It's sunny summer outside, wear your sunscreen, layer it, layer it, layer it. Stay hydrated, uh, beware of your surroundings and, and then come back. Beware of your surroundings by being here, back watching the next video in the queue. So thanks again, y'all. And until next time.